welcome, welcome. I am finally back here on Shadow Moss. We've gotten pretty much the whole front half of this island decorated, minus this area in front of resident services, but I'll fix that one day, eventually. So like I shared previously, the front parts of this island are the more normal sections, and as we start to get further back, things are gonna get a little weird. Here's our map again to show you how this will all be laid out. So the left half is gonna be sort of swampy, the right is gonna be more forested, front left is for farming and fishing, then when you go further back, it'll turn into our witchy swamp. Front right is our artisan goods town, and as you go back, it'll turn into our cryptid and alien forest. And that's exactly what we're gonna be decorating today. We'll have our campsite, a lake, some aliens, and our resident conspiracy theorist, Roswell, will be living back here too. As you can see, I've got my work cut out for me to get this space built up, so let's just get right into the speed build. The first thing to do was to move everyone's houses because I've just been storing them in this area to get them all out of the way while I try to sort out the rest of the island. I put Barbara in the back left corner along with Puddles as this is going to be our witchy swamp and I want her to be our fortune teller and Puddles to be our potion maker. This area is a total mess, but that'll be a problem to solve another day. While I was shifting everyone's houses around, our shady cousin was in town, so I stopped in to see him. And he was selling the perfect camping chair for our build today, which was great. Thanks, Red. I also moved Shep, who will eventually be our totally legal mushroom farmer over on the swampy side of the island. I'll probably decorate his home for our next speed build, so definitely share all your funky fungi ideas for him in the comments. Last up to move was Roswell. He's our alien conspiracy theorist slash cryptozoologist, but not in the way you'd expect. So my backstory for him is that he's a bit of an oddball alien who maybe got stranded here on Earth, and now he is super into cryptids. He spends all of his time searching for cryptids in the woods and getting sucked into all sorts of conspiracy theories. All the other aliens think he's a bit of a weirdo and don't take him seriously, but they don't want to deal with him so they just humor his wacky reports cause it's keeping him out of their hair. I imagine he's like a combination of Steven Universe and Ronaldo Fryman. So yes, he's technically an alien invader, but he's goofy and harmless. Nobody pays much mind to most of his ramblings, except for maybe our stoner boy Shep, but nobody takes him seriously either. Speaking of Roswell, he had the nerve to actually try to up and leave while I was working on building this huge area just for him. I spent at least 20 hours on this build, let alone all the time and nook mile tickets I spent hunting for him. No Roswell, you absolutely cannot leave. You are stranded here with me forever. Even after I told him that he has essential cryptid research to do here and the other aliens aren't coming to pick him up until he finds all of them, he continued talking about heading out on some road trip or something. No Roswell, just no, you stay here. Since we are on the topic of men causing trouble for me, let's talk about Antonio. While I was in the middle of this huge build, he derailed my work to spur the moment invite me over to his place. I was at a bit of a loss as to what I was going to do for this build and could use a break, so I said, sure, why not? But it ended up being a weird visit. He followed around behind me the entire time and then the prize he gave me for winning the card game he played was a staff uniform. Antonio is the owner of the farm to table restaurant downtown. So I'm out here busting my ass building up this entire island and Antonio sees this and thinks, you know what she needs right now? She needs me to pile on even more work and responsibility onto her. No, sir, I do not. He could have given me some nice bath products so I could unwind after working so hard. He could have given me a meal from his fancy restaurant as a treat. Hell, I'd have loved some crafting materials to help me with this build. But no, he tried giving me more things to put on my to-do list. He is just too much for me to deal with today. All right, let's ignore those men for a moment and get back to the build. So I sunk down this area behind Nan and Chevray's artist studios for our campsite area. As per usual, I did not clearly plan out what I wanted to do back here. Because of this, it took me so long to figure out exactly how this place was gonna look and I built up and tore down the terraforming and waterscaping over here so many times. So I cut out a bunch of it to save us all the pain of watching me fumble around for hours. One day, maybe I'll learn my lesson and plan out these builds a bit more. Probably not, but maybe someday. I wanted our campsite to be tucked away into the woods next to a big lake. The space we're working with here is much too small for that vision of sprawling trees and waters I was imagining, so I had to scale that down a bunch to fit the reality of the area I had. 
Even though it's much more quaint than I had envisioned, I think it still turned out well in the end. While I try reworking this landscaping, let me share some more villager updates. First up, our poor Nan got sick. She and her girlfriend Chevray have opened up their relationship and are seeing more people. So this was probably bound to happen eventually. Nothing to be ashamed about though. Thankfully, I got her some medicine and she started feeling much better right away. A few days later, it was her birthday. I was a bit worried about going to another party after what happened at Cherry's, but I can't miss a villager's birthday. Our rebellious girl Hazel was already there partying it up with Nan. After Hazel's fight with Shep and Dobie and all of Nan's relationship drama with Chevray, Ray, Cherry, and Antonio, I just know these two ladies were using this as a time to vent and let loose together. Good for them. Cherry passive aggressively kicked me out of her party after I gave her a birthday gift, so I was worried that I'd get the same response from Nan, but no. She said thank you, called me a sweetheart, and said I made her day special. I was relieved. See Cherry, that is how you respond when somebody gives you a birthday present. Moving on to my other pal on this island, Puddles, a few things were up with her. Number one, apparently she and Shep got into a fight. I don't know who started it, but Shep has now been in two back-to-back -back fights. I thought he was a pretty chill dude, but he has been acting up lately. Puddles tasked me with delivering her apology gift to him because apparently I didn't look busy enough. She got him this very frilly, skimpy top, which doesn't really seem like his style. She is our resident pink latex dom though, so maybe this is some sort of a humiliation thing for him? I don't know, but I'm not about to get in the middle of it. Besides pulling me into her relationship issues with other villagers, Puddles was also busy sending me tons of mail. I swear, every time I went to the mailbox, I had a thinly veiled secret admirer message from her. In one, she was saying that we should hang out more and that I deserve extra special treatment. I also got a message from Antonio right after that, bragging about how strong his fingers are. Uh, you need to work on your game. No thanks, bud. I got another message from her later saying how I'm fun and she cares about me. These paired with all the other letters I've gotten from her so far, and yeah, Puddles definitely is crushing on me. All right, back to the build. So when you walk down into this valley area, the front part will be our sort of typical campsite deal. The lake, however, is gonna be our first cryptid spotting area. This is where our Loch Ness monster lives. I really wanted to incorporate a dinosaur fossil poking out of the water, but I just couldn't get it to work in this space, so she's just under the water somewhere. Or at least that's what Roswell claims. I got a few fun cryptid custom codes to use in our forest back here too, that you'll get to look at as we go along. On the second level around this area, we'll have some hiking trails. I love walking through the woods with my dog, so I definitely want to include that activity on my island. Plus, it'll be a good spot to sprinkle in some more cryptid nods. We are right next to the museum and botanical garden, so I used some caves and built up cliffs around here to try to hide that a bit. I didn't want to completely separate these areas though, so for my convenience of actually playing on this island, I left a little trail on the side so it's easy to access the museum without having to hike all the way around. Speaking of the museum, if you missed any of my other Animal Crossing speed builds or villager drama updates, I'll link the playlist to all those here. Also, if you are liking this build so far, take a quick sec to click the like button. It makes me happy to know what y'all are enjoying and it helps this video get recommended to other people too. So go ahead and click the like button. If not for me, then do it for Roswell. He needs your help spreading his cryptic conspiracies. Maybe one more like will make somebody out there finally listen. I am not super versed in cryptids, but I used to love all that shit when I was a kid. Aliens were always and still are my favorite creatures, though they're not really cryptids. They're for real out there somewhere in some form or another. Probably not in the way we depict them, but I mean, we're aliens. Life happened on our planet, so it's bound to have happened other places too, even if it's just microscopic. Cryptid-wise though, Bigfoot was probably the one I was most intrigued by, just because I love learning about primates and evolution, so Bigfoot seemed like they'd be really interesting on those fronts if they were real. I've always valued science and skepticism a lot though, so I never really believed in any of the cryptids, but they're cool folklore things to think about and have fun with. Do y'all believe in any of this stuff? Do you have any favorite cryptids? This under the trail will be our alien zone. 
Here I'm digging out a crater for our UFO. Maybe it's Roswell's and this is where he crashed, or maybe it's the ship for all our gyroid friends who are visiting the island on a sightseeing tour. Humans go on vacation to cryptid and alien sighting locations. Why wouldn't other aliens do the same thing? It took a lot of tweaking to get the spacing on all of these asteroids and alien markings right, so I skipped ahead a bit here. I really like combining these with the glowing moss pieces. I think this really helps the spaceship look like it's having some weird effects on the surrounding landscape back here. I then surrounded this crater with a bunch of trees and cliffs to help hide it a bit and make it seem like it's in a more secluded part of the woods. I really wanted these cryptid areas to feel tucked away into the forest here. It's a relatively small area we're working with though, so I can't truly hide any of it, but I did my best to make them a little less obvious to the unsuspecting hiker. Over at the back right of the trail here is our Bigfoot sighting area. This is where Roswell is collecting evidence that he can report back to his mothership about these cryptid creatures he's trying to convince them that he's discovered on Earth. I place a little duster and a shovel over here to act like his investigating tools. It's just a tiny little area, but I think it really ties into his story and adds a bit of a fun, unexpected element so that this isn't just your typical hiking trail. I absolutely love this giant atlas moth model I commissioned from Plick. It's huge and hard to fit anywhere, but I was not about to let it just sit in my storage. This is probably the real creature behind the Mothman sightings on this island. Will Roswell listen to this plausible explanation? Never. He's having fun chasing his delusional life passion, so we will all nod our heads and agree to just let him have this. You better not burst his tinfoil lined bubble and break his precious heart. Now let's move over to Roswell's yard. He's an oddball conspiracy theorist plus an alien, so I figured he'd want to have a sort of prepper style bunker home. He's got to be pretty paranoid about all that government monitoring and doomsday conspiracy stuff, as well as worried about having his cover blown and getting found out to be an alien. Everyone absolutely already knows that he's an alien, but he thinks he's got his cover locked down. I put a bunch of jail bars and fences as a makeshift barrier to keep all those nosy humans and government agents out of his yard. The rock at the back here is his research and theorizing area. Here he can track how different star and moon phases affect the cryptids, spy on government satellites, and look out for other alien ships. In the front of his house is his makeshift workshop. Here he can tinker with different bits and bobs to try to make useful things to prep with or work on fixing up his UFO. I spent a lot of time tweaking the finishing details and laying down all the paths off camera, so we'll take a look at the final results of all these areas in the tour at the end. For now, let's move on to making over Roswell's house. Throughout the exterior of this area, I used lots of grays, oranges, and greens. So I did the same for his home. It looks like maybe he could have built up this makeshift house himself or stumbled upon an abandoned shack when he landed and fixed it up into his hideout. I actually really like the look of his original home, but it just wasn't a good fit for his storyline here, so it had to go. My entire inspiration for this whole build was that TV monitoring wall, so I built this home entirely around wanting to use that wallpaper. This is his bunker, so besides the monitors, I used that corrugated metal siding as the main wallpaper, then gave him a sturdy metal floor too. These definitely seem like they could have been scrap collected from his spaceship that he used to build up this bunker. I was very tempted to include lots of high tech stuff in here, but I really wanted it to look more like a prepper's makeshift hideout than a polished alien lab. So you'll see that there's plenty of rusty and rustic mismatched pieces throughout the interior. The front half is his living quarters and the back half is his research and monitoring zone. I gave him plenty of storage for all his stockpiles of food and emergency supplies. I figured that stuff would be the priority and comfort items would be an afterthought. So those things are pretty basic. Just a simple messy bed for sleeping and a folding table and chairs for eating at. Later on, I put some instant noodles on the table cause you know most of the meals that he eats are probably gonna be shelf stable convenience food that he's cycling out of his rations before they expire. I really wish that we could expand our villagers room sizes like we can in Happy Home Paradise. 
I like that Roswell Spunker is small, but I wish it were just a touch bigger so I could have squeezed in a few more items. But for some reason we can't, so I just had to work with what we've got. I did what I could to give this place enough stuff to get the vibes across while still having at least a few spaces for walking around in. Yeah, I have a bit of an overcluttering problem in this game. Oh well, I like decorating and it looks good even if it's a bit awkward to move around in. If my villagers want to stretch their legs, they can walk outside. For his research area at the back, I gave him another conspiracy theory board because of course he's going to need both an indoor and an outdoor version. He also has one of those amazing machines because it seems like some sort of an alien lab analyzer to run samples through or something. Then the main piece is his desk and huge monitor wall. I imagine that is where he spends most of his time, looking through all the security footage, trying to find evidence of cryptid activity, recording notes for his reports to the mothership, and scouring conspiracy forums. That's mostly it for in here. I'm just finishing up doing the wall decor and the lighting, so let's go ahead and take a tour so we can see how this whole cryptid campsite and conspiracy bunker turned out. All right, let's take a hike and search for some cryptids. So going behind the artist village, we come to the trailhead. There's a little lookout spot and you can either go to the right to hike the trails or down into the campground. This is just your typical campsite for the most part. It does look like maybe the campers who were here last stopped by Shep's place to grab some supplies on their way in. The lake is our first cryptid sighting spot. Is this lake big enough for a whole Loch Ness monster to live in? No, probably not. But that doesn't deter Roswell from believing there's some sort of a lake monster in here and trying to document it. He's got a few pictures of something over here, so maybe he's right and we're just not looking hard enough. Climbing up this cliffside here, we are at the other trail entrance. Hiking back here, there is a little access point to the botanical gardens just for convenience sake. Then over here is our UFO landing site. I really love the combo of the glowing moss, the floating asteroids, and bubbling lava lamps. I bet this is going to look even cooler at night. Hiking through the rest of the woods, I put some more floating asteroids around to make it seem like things here are a bit odd. There are also some gyroid aliens bopping around back here too. Hidden in these tall grasses is a Bigfoot track that Roswell is studying. Is it real? Is someone messing with him? Or is he faking it so he doesn't have to go back to his home world and get a real job? We may never know the truth. Now, normally most people aren't welcome back here, but since I helped Roswell put this bunker together, I can let y'all in for a quick tour just this once. The front yard is a bit of a hodgepodge of rusty junk, but it is all very important for Roswell's work, or so he claims. He's got an old broken down spaceship out here that he promises he's totally gonna fix up like new someday. On the beach is his self-sufficiency garden. It's mostly just potatoes cause those are gonna have the most calories and the longest shelf life. Then at the back is his outdoor research area. There's even a little alien gyroid here visiting him. Probably just pretending to take extensive notes to report back to the mothership about all of Roswell's very important cryptid research. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look inside. This is the finished bunker. It's a bit cramped, but I really like the vibes in here and it suits Roswell's story perfectly. He's got a very minimal living area up front here with all his emergency stockpiles pretty much taking over most of his space. That's just how he likes it though. The back room is for his cryptid research and security monitoring. He's got stuff to analyze samples, connect the dots between all his theories, and record footage for evidence. He hasn't made any big discoveries yet, but just you wait, he's gonna blow the lid off of all of this very soon. All right, that's everything. Even though it took me way too long to get all this finished, I really like it. This whole area is such a fun, unexpected take on a typical campground and hiking trail. I had a great time thinking up goofy backstories for this whole place and it totally suits our cryptozoologist, conspiracy theorist, alien boy, Roswell. This is definitely my new favorite area of the island just for the silly vibes. I hope I've inspired you to make up some quirky, convoluted elements to your island too. So definitely let me know what you think of this build and storyline in the comments. Don't forget to send a like my way if you enjoyed this video, it is super helpful. Remember, be kind to yourself today and I'll see you next time.